Hi, everybody. Brad Sham with DePaul Hall of Famer Stephen Howard. So happy you're with us. So happy to be here. This is what college basketball is all about. You're right, Brad. Absolutely. This is college basketball. You got your in-state rivalry. It's senior night. I'm excited to be here. It should be a great matchup. Anthony Calhoun along with former DePaul basketball star Stephen Howard. And Stephen, tonight we've got the two hottest teams in the SWAC. What can we expect here in tonight's game? Well, you're right, Anthony. They are extremely hot with Grambling winning 9 of the last 11, Alabama State winning 10 of the last 11. But they both got to this championship game with two totally contrasting styles. Grambling State is a perimeter-oriented offense. They love to attack with their guards, shoot the three, and attack the gaps. Where Alabama State is a typical inside-out basketball team. They want to establish you on the paint, punish you on the block, and attack you on the glass. The team that's able to dictate their style most effectively will come out a winner and go dancing afterwards. One thing to look for in the second half. Well, you got to have Oklahoma going to the paint, attacking it, and keeping Oklahoma State out of the paint. A team that averages 30 points in the paint. They already got 14. Oklahoma has to do a better job keeping that rim away from Oklahoma State. This was all facilitated by that long court pass that's very dangerous when they press. And then with the, oh, my God, on the dunk, Court J. Cox going next level. We need to call the FAA and see if we got flight clearance. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Getting airborne with the young fella. I love it. How about the junior? Making his presence known. Won a lot of junior in that jump right there, right. let me tell you. This is uh, the worst three-point shooting team in the conference, and it hurts the feelings of their head coach as Fitzgerald finishes a fast break. And that's one thing Carl Blair does exceptionally well, always looking up on the court, always finding his man leaking out towards the basket. Good telepathic connection between Blair and Fitzgerald for the nice fast break point. Wow, you see him finding his teammate across the court. And Kevin Burrell, it's your birthday from downtown. And if you're a good player, you have that internal clock, knowing how much time he looked up, took a nice little step, got his feet into it, put his back into it, and showed his mama what she came to see from Philly with a nice three from downtown. Man, this team right now is playing on fire. And see, that's when you got to realize that you got a seven-footer down there and kick it out for your jump shooters. And a tough basket, and it goes down for Butler. And see right there, Butler used the rim to protect his shot, went up and under around the seven-footer where his length could not affect his shot. Now we're looking at Duncan on the other end of that last shot and just doing a good job of establishing pain. And here's Butler going up and under the seven-footer. If you can't beat him, Go under him. You know, earlier I was talking about Cameron Clark and the fact that he averaged less than one turnover a game, but also during this eight-game losing streak, he's only going to the free throw line twice. How about that? And, and that, to me, shows a lack of aggressiveness. It's Not twice a game. Right, twice, period. In fact, this is his third free throw attempt of the afternoon, and he's made them all. And so listen to what Mr. Howard is saying, boys and girls. This is more free throw attempts than he's had in eight games. Right, and, and that's inexcusable for a person and a player as – athletically gifted as Cameron Clark, a guy that plays above the rim. He's got to make that rim his best friend and playing above it and at it, something that he does regularly and often.